What's the word, y'all? Ladies and gentlemen, I got to admit, man, the last 48 hours of, of, of the NBA world have been extremely exhausting for me. I'm talking about the stuff that's happening on the court, off the court, social media, all of it combined has me exhausted for the first time of my life with this being my job. I'm usually a dude that's live tweeting events like the Vintage James Harden game we got today or the Dallas Mavericks doing Finney Smith hitting every single shot. Those are events that I'm usually live tweeting. But like, this is not supposed to be a video that's ranting about social media because that's we want to talk about the stuff that's actually happening on court. But I'm definitely going to do a video soon talking about all the ins and outs of NBA social media because it's going too far away from, I think, the intended purposes of these things. I started the, I started the Enjoy Basketball movement because I felt like so many people are not just enjoying the game of basketball which is what we're supposed to do it's so many like legacy tarnishing it's it's so much ranking it's so much just overall toxicity in the community and it's just exhausting for me so now i'm watching these games and i'm getting tweets like kenny no no tweets about dallas no tweets about philly i'm actually just going to talk to my community in these videos and let it be that bro that's how crazy we've gone bro and then sometimes i, I look at what's going on in 2022 and look at me being almost 26 years old and i'm trying to figure out am i so out of touch and i realize no it's the it's the children that are wrong either way uh join the enjoy basketball community on Twitter. I haven't been as active as I probably should be, but we got some good conversations. It's overall basketball lovers over there. Hit the link in the description, subscribe to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter and be looking out for the merch and stuff. I think it's a movement that needs to be to be uh, really talked about. And enjoying basketball don't mean that you can't have debate because debate is a big part of sports, but it's like it, it's it's so. Let's talk about these games, man. Let's talk about these games. I think we had two good games today. One way or another, the Dallas Mavericks tie up their series and the Philadelphia 76ers tie up their series. A series did not start until a roll team wins and so far has been home team home team home team home team but there is a lot to be said about these games let's start off with the first game of the day a game where Luka Doncic shot nine for 25 one for 10 from three and they comfortable comfortably beat the number one seeded team in the league the team that had dominated the entire regular season Luka I, I can't say a poor performance because his ability to make his teammates better and his ability to find his teammates elevates any bad well not any but majority of bad shooting nights so I can't say he had a bad game but he had a bad shooting performance he he went one for 10 from 10 uh, from three and they won pretty convincingly man you got to give a lot of credit to Doran Finney Smith on the broadcast they were talking about it, it was Mother's Day and they were telling the story of his family and his mom as she was still working at church's chicken after he signed his first contract and she finally quit because he signed that extension and now you're looking at that extension of you Doran Finney Smith you're like damn I could have got more than that and you look at that extension of you the Dallas Mavericks fan and said that's one of the best contracts in all the basketball like I said when it comes to the playoffs I love the chess match that is involved when it comes to these coaches the the first two games of the series, specifically in game number two, these Phoenix Suns hunted Luka Doncic. The entire fourth quarter, it was Chris Paul isolation Luka. It was Devin Booker isolation Luka. And now in the last two games, we haven't been able to see that. Actually, the hunted, the hunters have become the hunted. Chris Paul, they're trying to get him on switches. Devin Booker, they're trying to get him on switches, and it has been successful. What have the Dallas Mavericks done differently to prevent Luka Doncic from getting hounded? Well, when they try to get that screen to get Luka Doncic to switch, they are doubling the ball handler. They are forcing the ball out of Chris Paul's hands. They are forcing the ball out of Devin Booker's hands, and they are not allowing Luka to get a lot of possessions where it's him in isolation. It's beautiful coaching for Coach um, Jason Kidd. And like I mentioned a couple videos ago, I'm enjoying what what he is doing because he is not afraid to make some changes in his rotation today Frank Nielakina Frank Nielakina gave them almost nine minutes of like really solid basketball yeah he fouled a bit that's what you expect from a dude like Frank Nielakina but he was hounding you know what I'm saying we talked about in game number three how um Reggie Bullock had made Chris Paul's life a living hell he did it again and then Frank Nielakina helped it some more and then now even though <laughs> damn I didn't realize that Spencer Dimity shot three for a ten at one point in the second quarter Spencer Dimity wanted to went on the 8-0 run by himself and in that same quarter Davis Burton said four straight threes now you're getting the people outside of Luka doing part of their job and today they hit 23s 45 percent from the three but when it comes to Phoenix man Chris Paul has to be better you know what I'm done doing this thing I come to these videos and I'll be like uh, I don't see a world where Chris Paul has another stinker I don't see a world where Kevin Durant has another stinker I don't see a world where the Miami Heat shoot 20 percent from three again all of those things have happened Chris Paul had a, a terrible game on his birthday I was like ah, oh, that was he might have had a little hand before the game he's celebrating his birthday another stinker um the the Miami 
Miami Heat shot 20% from three a couple games last game, and it shot like 15% today. Kevin Durant put together multiple bad games. Like, I'm done saying it's unlike them to do it again because it seems like this playoffs, the unlikely thing is likely to happen. Chris Paul only being able to play 23 games, one of the biggest detriments to the team. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I know there are some Suns fans like, oh, it's heavily rigged against us. It's not rigged against you. Officiating in general is ass right now and i'm not even a dude that like to talk about officiating i did not watch this game thinking oh it was one-sided towards the dallas mavericks way or i did not watch the miami Heat lose their game and say it was one side of philly's way i think officiating is at an all-time low at the moment when it comes to playoffs at least in the regular season you know you got bad umps you got bad officiating but now these are supposed to be the top five percent of, of, of refs going to these games and trying to call it as close as possible and i'm a dude that's somewhat of a sympathetic when it comes to these referee referees because it is a hard job you try to make split decisions in a game where everybody knows how to sell calls everybody knows how to sell calls. even jason kidd in his post game interview talked about his team selling calls we've learned from the best talking about chris paul you know what i'm saying we've learned from one of the best when it comes to selling these calls we learned from chris so officiating is a hard thing but one thing that, that happened in, in today's slate of games and in yesterday's slate of games specifically when it came to the boston and, and milwaukee game there was no consistency with these calls in the game of baseball every single ump has its own little strike zone you could tell very early on oh this ump is calling a strike zone uh high okay so this this ball this this pitch that is usually a ball high he's calling it a strike so let me adjust my own personal radar and say this is coming in as a strike because i know the ump is gonna call strike in the game of basketball that's kind of the thing too that's why you hear the sayings are like oh they letting them play out there oh the whistle's kind of tight in these games there's no one way one quarter they tight as hell and then the next quarter they letting them play one minute you can't touch a dude and then the next minute they throwing punches there has been no consistency whatsoever so i know there's some Suns fans like oh man that six foul of chris paul that, that you don't call that it was a foul so i think you call it you know what i'm saying maybe they hadn't called that call in the first two quarters or first two quarters maybe but when you look at that replay Chris Paul did foul him. It's unfortunate. And you expect Chris Paul to be the smartest player on the court 99% of the time. In these last two games, he has not looked like that. For the first time, I've seen back-to-back -back games where Chris Paul has been uh, fuzzled. Confuzzled? Confused. And I saw something on Reddit that Chris Paul has blown, I think it was four 2-0 leads when it comes to playoffs in his NBA career. I don't like that stat. I desperately do not like that stat. Mikael Bridges, we needed you to have another good game. They didn't. Um, And then now, DeAndre Aiden has not looked as dominant as you expect him to look in a series where the Dallas Mavericks is going small. And a lot of that is credited to the Dallas Mavericks. They're preventing him from getting deep into the paint. And DeAndre Aiden is normally a dude that is not a guy that gets deep into the paint. He's a he's a long mid-range shooter. He's a finesse guy. He's a finesse guy. You know what I'm saying? He's not a physical dude. So they're preventing him from getting to the paint which is where he probably should be like i said jason kidd and them deserve a ton of credit in this one but what i am seeing from the phoenix suns if they want to get this thing back on track let me go to my notes because I, like i said i'll be i'll be taking notes here oh oh yeah th this is this is my notes and this is a scary note if you're the phoenix suns fan so maybe close your ears they reminded me of the utah jazz on their hope defense yep and game one and game two, they did a pretty good job of saying, let, we can let Luka drop 40, but we not about to we not about to let nobody else get free. We're not about to leave Doran Finney Smith. We're not going to leave these other players. And in game three and game four, it seemed like they flipped the idea completely. Where they're like, we're going to stop Luka. And Luka is a very willing passer. Luka's going to find Doran Finney Smith. Luka's going to find Maxi Kleba. So I, I would recommend, and again, I'm not Monty Williams. He has 35 million times his basketball knowledge as I do, as, as much coaching as he's done. Um, but as a, as a outsider looking in, I would say Luca beat us and let's, let's cling on to these shooters because right now they're scorching hot and we saw them be scorching hot basically in the last series as well. So you know that they could win four games where they hit 23s or 20-ish threes. So they got to figure it out, man. Shout out to the shooters over there because they doing their job. They doing their job. Um, at... I, I got to give a lot of credit to Jalen Brunson as well. Um, it went from D book calling him too small to him like going at book and like doing his best on it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Luca. They're they're hunting Chris Paul. They're hunting um a Devin Booker and they're getting good success from it. And I need to see Monty Williams adjust his rotations like we saw the Dallas Mavericks adjust theirs. Right now, Cameron Payne is not giving them anything at all. And when he got into the game, I don't know if this is first shift or second shift. In the first quarter, second quarter, it was three straight possessions where Luca was like, let's get let me get Cameron Payne on my on my back and let me back him down and force him to cause a double team and I'm gonna kick it out 4-3. It happened over and over again. Now they didn't hit every single one 
one of those threes. But it was just that's a great scheme. He's he can't really guard anybody out there. Now what Kenny, what is the alternative? The alternative is maybe seeing what Aaron Holiday has in the tank for you. Now, alternative number two, let Devin Booker run a lot of the point guard. When Chris Paul missed a good amount of the games this season, point D book was a thing. Last season, point D book was a thing, and it was a damn good thing. You know, we even saw it in the playoffs last year. Let D book just control the second unit. Now you probably asking a lot, but like listen, you need two more wins in this series. You can't lose two more games. So you gotta bring out some stuff that you might have done sometime because this is this is something that they ain't prepared for either. So go ahead, do your thing, man. Bring bring them out. Bring them out. Oh man, James Harden. This is the the most James Harden like game we've seen since James Harden pretty much got. To, I mean, I guess the first couple games he got to Philly, he was really good as well. But the first time of the playoff run for them, we got like a oh snap James Harden game. And if we get an, at least something similar to this, whoa. Uh, look out because Philly looks dangerous. Um, he ended up with 31 points, nine assists, seven rebounds. He had six threes, and we got him yelling. And when James Harden is yelling, you know he on. And then I got I got to admit, this is about as dominant as I've seen Joel Embiid be since he hurt his hand, which is another good sign. I think Bam Adebayo did a pretty good job trying to force the ball out of his hands or try to deny the ball for Joel Embiid from getting it or deny. Joel and B from getting the ball, but when he did get it, it was like barbecue chicken. You know what I'm saying? And that is, I'm telling you, bro, these two dudes can click at this level. Miami got to look out because I said, oh, they ended up hitting a couple threes late in the game. So they were shooting like 16% for a lot of this game. They ended up shooting 20 at the grand scheme, seven of 35, still terrible. Um, But boy, oh boy, we got Danny Green, second game in a row where he got impact. He was impactful with hitting the shots. And then we didn't get a terrible George Niang game. Hello? Little bit scary. Um, Tyrese Maxey shot out of a cannon, and they overall played played amazing defense. And, and Miami should be, I don't know, I, I, a little bit worried, bro. Kyle Lowry, he ended up 3 for 10 from the field. I swear the times that he did get, did get towards the basket, he passed out for a 3 every single time. And I understand 3 is greater than 2. Mori ball, Mori ball, Mori ball. And you want to see your shooters get it going because, well, right now we ain't been able to hit threes. But at some point, you got to take, you got to take the easy one, bro. And that goes for the entire Miami Heat team. Jimmy Butler. Second game in a row, he tried to put a backpack on. 40 points for him, six assists. He was just over, the only player on the team that really showed up other than Bam. Again, other than Bam. Bam had a great performance after game number three. He gave us a stinker. He had a great performance. Everything after that, Tyler Hero couldn't get it going. Um, Victor Oladipo couldn't get it going. We got 0 for 6 from 3 from Kyle Lowry. 0 for 4 from 3 from Gabe Vincent. And I'm so surprised at Spostra when you were having performances like this. Duncan Robinson has to be in so deep in the doghouse. It is crazy. My team was shooting 15 to 17 percent for the majority of this game, and I decided not to give Duncan Robinson a second, not to get Kayla Martin more than 10 seconds at the end of the game. You know, I can't. Same thing I said with Monty Williams. I can't tell Eric Spoelstra how to coach because he knows way more than I do. But like, at some point, you gotta give him a chance, right? You gotta. That's a 90 million dollar contract. And listen, the defense won't suffer that much. I wouldn't expect it to suffer that much if Duncan is out there on the court or if if Caleb Martin is out there on the court. And like I said, I'm done saying I, I don't expect them to shoot this way again. I'm done saying that because we've seen that hey, they they can they they can shoot that bad. So a lot of credit goes to the Philadelphia 76ers. Unfortunately, only got to watch pretty much the second half of this one. Um, and in the second half, I saw a lot of James Harden going crazy, so that's dope. Uh, but boy, oh boy, we got two series right now. And again, maybe not because the home team hasn't lost yet. But hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, people are asking my opinion about this whole um. Jordan Poole, Ja Morant stuff. And that was part of the stuff I was talking about at the beginning of the video. We're off the court stuff has me exhausted as well. Um, I literally do not have an opinion. That that my opinion is that I don't have one. Um, I can I'm I'm a person that can admit, like, if I don't know anything about a situation, I don't need to just form an opinion. I personally didn't think it was a dirty move from Jordan Poole, but I can understand why Ja Morant would feel that way when you look at that replay. But if you look at the other plays with him jumping out at at um Clay Thompson, that looked like a play that could have hurt his knee. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't really have an opinion. It's unfortunate that he's listed as um doubtful for game number four because obviously he's been one of the reasons why they won their one game or the reason why they won their one game here but it's just so exhausting to see like the fan bases go back and forth ah oh, name calling and now now you <laughs> now you got a generation of fans that might dislike John Morant now or a generation of people that hate the Warriors because of this seemingly dirty play or whatever it may be. I don't know, man. It, it's, it's it's getting rough out there. And that's why I said I just want to come out here and talk to y'all because, again, I think we're building a community where I would say 97% of y'all 
have the same like mindset as me as far as enjoying the game of basketball. Not everybody, which is fine. Everybody doesn't have to think the way I think. Actually, I'm, I prefer that everybody doesn't think the way I think because what the hell would we be doing here? But yeah, man. Oh, another thing off the court, the, the Chris Paul, um, his family getting pushed or whatever the story is unacceptable. Obviously, that one fan does not account for the entire Dallas Maverick fan base the same way no one fan account or no one person accounts for an entire group of people. It's never that way. But it's literally, it's unacceptable, bro. It's completely unacceptable. I don't understand the lack of boundaries when it comes to these things. And it's not even a professional sports thing, just a, the boundaries as human beings. I would, I would never, ever, you should never, ever, un, like, just put your hands on someone just because of who they are. You know what I'm saying? Even if it was, like, trash talk speaking to each other between the Paul family and this random fan, it should never get to the elevation of pushing or get putting hands on anyone especially someone's mother bro on mother's day on mother's day you're gonna push someone's mother on mother's day out of all of the days it's not cool for 365 but especially not today especially not today there has to be some type of boundaries and i feel like since and i i don't know so i think it might have been the kaius duncan that tweeted this and i could be it might not have been him um, that since the, the fans have been involved or back into the arenas, it felt like we've getting, we've been getting so many instances of fans pushing the boundaries. At the end of the day, these Hoopers are, are people and we're, we're supposed to be there enjoying their product of the game of basketball. And it shouldn't be much more than that. Dislike Chris Paul all you want, dislike any NBA player all you want. It should never get physical in any circumstance. It should not. Whether it's amongst each other, a Mavs fan versus a Suns fan should be throwing punches, or you versus the family of a player that's playing. It's it's unacceptable, y'all, and we got to be better. We got to be better as fans. Now, actually, I don't know why I'm saying we because I know boundaries. Y'all got to. <laughs> that guy has to be better because it's unacceptable.